welcome to day nine of the 28 day British accent challenge. Today we're going to move on to consonants and these two sounds we're going to study today are both aspirated. This means that they are voiceless sounds and the air passes out of the mouth. And the sounds are P hotel and P people. Now these take quite a similar mouth positioning and as I said they're both aspirated and this is the reason we're studying these together today. So just have a look at these two words. Hot, pot. The main difference here is that with the P, the lips come together. P, P, P. But you'll notice that in both cases I am pulling in these muscles around the cheek area and a very good exercise to help you to feel this sensation and also to, to practice using these muscles is to stifle a smile. Another very good warm up for these sounds is to stifle a smile and hum. Mm. People, pound, pie, permanent. So you'll notice I'm using these muscles, I'm stifling a smile. I'm also lifting the palate slightly, and this just helps us to channel the air into these cavities at the back of the mouth, to stop the air rushing forwards too much. So it's all about controlling the airflow in order to have nice strong vowels after the consonant sounds. Permanent, people. So I'm stifling a smile and I'm lifting up the palate slightly. Really it's all about intention, so I'm setting the intention to send the sound back and I'm controlling it by using these muscles here in the cheeks. As with all sounds, I'm always focusing on expansion of the cave area because that's where I want the vowel to be. And that's why stifling a smile and humming is such a good exercise. It's a really good reminder of general technique. So let's come back to that pair of words, hot, 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 pot. And it's the vowel here that's causing this roundedness of my lips. Hot, hot, pot, hot, pot. And so, as I said, the main difference is that my lips are coming together. Pot, hot. Help, how, hotel, him. Just notice how the lips vary slightly according to the vowel that follows the consonant. Now this is very important because it's important to realize that the position for the H is and the position for the P is very similar positioning. We're stifling a smile, the corners come back slightly, as I said we're lifting the palate. Any change in the shape of the lips is going to be due to the vowels that follow. Okay, so please do rewind and practice a little bit. Go over these words, pause, take a mirror, look in the mirror, and do make sure that you've got the positioning correct um, and feel comfortable with the pronunciation before you move on to the sentences. As always, it's really good just to pronounce the sounds on their own to start with. And p, p, p. essentially there's a flow of air that comes out and we're controlling it with these muscles here in the cheeks in order to have nice strong vowels that follow. Okay, so it's a really important point which is why I've repeated it. Okay, when you're ready you can move on to the sentences. As always I recommend that you do day one of the challenge in order to warm up all the muscles in the mouth before you continue. A really good exercise for me today is to lower my bottom jaw and hum because I still have this cold that won't go away. And as I've said in previous videos, this is a really good exercise to take the voice away from the nose and into the throat. Now, everyone is going to have a weakness, whether it's because of illness or because of your native accent. So be aware of what your weakness is and then practice the warm up 
that is best suited to that. So if you have problems with movements of the tongue, then you can hold up the tongue on the palate. And you can even hold something up there. And we'll look more at this when we practice sounds which require the movement of the tongue. Uh, for me, it's lowering the bottom jaw and humming. For you, it could also be stifling a smile and humming. I think most people really benefit from doing this one. And obviously it's very relevant today with the sounds we're covering. So when you're ready, when you've warmed up, when you've practiced enough, we will do the sentences. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Now in order to pronounce this tongue twister clearly, you really do need to stifle a smile. Otherwise you're going to trip over your tongue and your lips and everything with all those P sounds, okay? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. In addition, you want to be lifting the palate. How can a horse have his home in a hotel? How many people appear to heat up a pot of porridge? So you're going to notice that you really do need to use the muscles in the cheeks by stifling a smile in order to get through the whole of this. Obviously, when we do the exercise, stifling a smile and humming, it's going to be a little bit more exaggerated, but it's still necessary when you're speaking in order to control the airflow. We'd heard of a hotel, especially for important people. Now, as you probably noticed, I did all these sentences quite slowly. If you're more advanced, then you can speed up and that's going to be more natural because um, in British English, we use something called fast speech. And I keep repeating this every day because it's very important. For instance, we're not going to say, we had heard, we're going to say, we'd heard, which is what I did today. But just to be aware that the speed is quite important, to start with, you want to speak slowly in order to pronounce the words clearly, but going forwards, if you speak too slowly, it's going to affect your rhythm and your emphasis, and it just won't sound very natural. And obviously there's a difference between reading and speaking, so I would recommend that you do all the sentences slowly first and then you have a look at them and when you, you're fairly sure that you can remember them off by heart, say them as naturally as you possibly can as if it's a part of natural conversation. Some sentences will be easier than others because obviously Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper is not a very natural sentence, okay, but it's a really good one for practicing the pup. So I'm going to go through them quite quickly for you now. How can a horse have his home in a hotel? How many people appear to heat up a pot of porridge? We'd heard of a hotel, especially for important people. And you'll notice that the faster I speak, the more I tend to use these muscles here to help with the flow. And obviously it stops me from tripping over my tongue. And my focus is more and more on these cavities in the back of the mouth. So the more you can warm up that area, the better. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you liked this video, please do like it. And if you're in a hurry to study all 45 of these sounds in the International Phonetic Index, then you can just scroll down below and you can head over to my membership site where you will be offered a free seven day trial of my library of videos and you'll be invited to at least one group coaching call. See you tomorrow.